Hello and welcome to the Fun Kids Book Club podcast. My name is Bex and this week I'm chatting to a brand new author with an excellent book. It's L. McNichols' A Kind of Spark. So let's have a little chat, shall we? I'm joined down the line by brand new author L. McNichol. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm thrilled to, he- to have you here because um, I've been reading your new book, A Kind of Spark, and it is uh, wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about your main character, Addy? So Addie is an 11-year-old autistic girl and she lives in a tiny, tiny village in Scotland just outside of Edinburgh. And she lives with her two older sisters, Kidi, who is also autistic like her, and Nina, who is not autistic, but who is a beauty blogger and who is very concerned about being cool and sticking to the rules. And she discovers at school one day that her village hundreds of years ago was responsible for executing a lot of women for the crime of witchcraft, which of course was a false charge and and not real. And she's fascinated by that and infuriated by it. And she decides to start her own campaign to make a memorial in honour of the, the witches. And of course, this is all going on while, you know, Addie's still at school dealing with kind of normal friendship issues that we all go through. Uh, she's got her ex-best friend who's found a new best friend. Somebody new joins the school as well. Uh, and it's about making friends with Audrey. That's pretty important in her life too, right? Definitely very important. I think that's such a difficult time at school when your friends suddenly aren't your friends anymore and you don't exactly know why. And Addie, of course, uh, being autistic on top of everything, she can't quite understand why her best friend has suddenly got a new best friend. And yes, Audrey is a, a brand new girl from London who is a little bit unsure of the village because it's so different to her her hometown. And she and Addie become fast friends because of their, their being outliers. Yeah, I love their friendship so much. I love Audrey like genuinely being interested in Addie and yeah. kind of just develop a trust, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think um, Addie's a very, very good character. I don't think I've ever written anyone as good as she is. And she's very kind and very generous. And, and that gets her um, pushed aside, sadly, by a lot of other people her age. But Audrey really sort of sees something in her and understands that that compassion is actually a real strength. Mm. And also just um, Addie's relationship with her big sister, Kidi, because she's kind of the only person who really understands her, I guess, uh, because they obviously both have autism. They've both gone through that together. Yeah, exactly right. Um, A lot of books that um, have autistic characters in them, I feel uh, as a neurodivergent person, there's usually only one. And I just thought, you know, that's not always the norm. Families tend to have lots of people who are neurodivergent in them. So I'm going to have an older sibling who's autistic. um, And she's really a mentor to Addie. And she really understands on a deep personal level everything that she is going through and their relationship is is definitely the heart of the book they're very very close but um of course the plot of the book without giving anything away there's there's mm-hmm. something um upsetting kitty and bothering her and Addie's desperate to figure out what it is also, um, I th- Juniper is, is a real place. Am I right in saying that? The village? It, it is a real place. It's not called Juniper. It's called Juniper Green. I just outed yes. myself. All my, my friends and family <laughs> from back home are going to be looking fast, speeding through the book, trying to find out if they're in it. But um, yeah, it is It is based on a very real place. It's a historic mill village in, in, in the outskirts of Edinburgh. No, I think I know of it. Um, because yeah. I... <laughs> I because when, when I read the book I was like that seems really familiar so I, I, sp- I spent a lot of time in Edinburgh itself and I know um the Dalmahoy area nearby oh yes okay yep so yep. yeah um so I was like this sounds very familiar but I had no idea it had all of this history to it and all of the um the witchcraft trials is fascinating to learn about as well it's so fascinating and of course it was all all around Edinburgh there were um which problems with witchcraft um, and um, and just very strange. Scotland really had, had a, they thought, a ton of witches and um, more than anywhere else in the UK. And I just, I find that really interesting. And I very much like, there's a scene in the book where Addie is first learning about the witches in, a, in class. And um, that was very much my experience as a, as a 10 year old. Just, I couldn't believe I lived in a part of the world that was so utterly, you know, it was mad what they did, and 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 it was such a fascinating um, part of history because so much of history you learned we learned in Scotland was about London and and Europe and just all, all these faraway places, and then to find out that your own front door there was this horrific um, yeah. part of history. Uh, yeah, and it's something that I didn't learn about at school. So um, 
I felt like your book it gave me a lot of stuff because the witchcraft stuff I didn't know about and and also like you know learning more about autism as well is a really useful thing I think for kids and grown-ups yeah because I think and one of the things that I say in the book or one of the characters says in the book is they s- try and stress to the teacher the Miss Murphy the, the horrible teacher mm. um they say it's not a personality difference and I think that's what some people are under the illusion of they think that someone who's autistic is just a little bit different and a little bit more quirky or a little bit more shy or just and it's really a a a, a very different reality you have you know it's not a bad thing in any way and I'm the first person to say that but it, you you have a different reality you feel things a little bit more and your senses are a lot more heightened and you know you have these physiological things going on that are, are different to your neurotypical friends or who are your non-autistic friends and the book's really about that and Addie feels things very vividly and she expresses that throughout the book and and so it, it's a way of of sort of making an example of of how a lot of autistic people, um, neurodivergent people think and feel. And yeah, was that a really important thing for you to put out into the world? Definitely, because I, you know, I only, there was only one book I remember reading when I was, um, you know, 11, 12 about an autistic character. And I just remember thinking, that is so far from my experience and I don't recognise that at all. And a lot of books, unfortunately, with autistic characters tend to paint the you know the, the the condition as being a bit of a burden and and something very negative and and I wasn't in favor of that at all so I I, I really wanted Addie to to have all the ups and downs of being um, neurodivergent of being autistic you know the really good moments and, and and the bad moments because it's just another way of being human and it's no better and no worse and it's such a great book to read just to follow her um, her just being a normal kid and just having this project that she wants to get you know she wants to get these uh, these women recognized mm. for, who were who were campa- who well accused of being witches she you know she wants to um, understand her family and her friends more and that's something that we all go through yeah definitely and that's that's the plot of the story the story is not about autism it's about this yeah. autistic girl and it's about her 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 mission to get this memorial made and the fact that she's going up against a council who are a little bit snooty and a little bit old-fashioned and they're a lot more concerned about superficial things and they don't want anything that might stop their little village from becoming a tourist hotspot and and so they don't meet her halfway at all on her her, her mission for this campaign and you know there's no a lot of um, autistic characters, and sometimes in in fiction, they'll have some kind of strange superpower that's that's mm-hmm. not not the norm. You know, they'll have they'll be very very gifted at maths, or you know, and and most autistic people are, are very normal, and they don't all have superpowers. So Addie's superpower really is her de- determination and her drive, and the fact that she, even though the town keeps saying no, she doesn't give up. Man, I wanted to shout at that committee leader so much. That leader. Like, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? You also explore um, one of my favourite, and I've, I've, this is something that I found fascinating over the last few years myself, the difference between being nice and being good. That is something that you can have referenced a few Yes. Times. Yes, I remember being in a class at school once, and I said, I it must have been a creative writing class or something, and I said, oh, being nice isn't the same as being good and and somebody else got really incensed by that comment they got really angry and they went of course it's the same thing and I said Mm. it's actually not there's a lot of people who are very nice but they're not necessarily good and Mm. it is quite a complex idea and and it is explored in the book you know some people are maybe not the nicest people they're maybe a bit grumpy they're maybe a bit rougher in the edges they're maybe a bit hard to talk to but it doesn't mean that they're not a good person and that they don't do good things and at the same time there's people who smile very widely and are very friendly but may not actually be very good people and and it is a complicated uh, idea but it's definitely explored in the book and it's something Addie has to grapple with and understand for herself hey look Addie's doing it but I only got there the last few years so she's <laughs> <laughs> same like 100% the same so Elle we do something on fun kids where uh, I do a little quick fire round of questions with authors if that's okay to do with you a hundred percent. Look, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, so no pressure. Don't worry about it. Um, first <laughs> question is just books or Kindles. Books. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> heroes or villains. Uh, vi- villains. Villains. Film adaptation or TV adaptation. Oh, film adaptation. Okay. Writing or reading. Oh, that's hideous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, writing. Oh. That was tough, I could tell. <laughs> Edinburgh or London? 
Oh, that, that's not a normal question. That's oh, um, for you. Oh, oh gosh, uh, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Okay, Hogwarts or Narnia? Narnia. Laptop or write by hand? Laptop. I have terrible handwriting. <laughs> Bookshop visit or school tour? Which one would you prefer to promote? <laughs> I'm currently not allowed to do either, but um, uh, bookshop, I think. I just, I can't wait for them to be open again. Do you write nine to five or do you write whenever you fancy? Uh, three in the morning, so whenever I fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear. And finally, the last one, the big one, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Oh, salt and vinegar. Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Well, um... Well, first of all, you win brownie points for um, saying salt and vinegar. Um, <laughs> you, you could have said anything and I'd have been fine, but some, that is the main answer. Um, <laughs> secondly, uh, you actually did abide by the rules of quickfire. So many authors don't, uh, don't do that for me. So that was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and um, finally, we should say A Kind of Spark is out right now. Like you said, uh, bookshops aren't maybe open near you, but you can also order online. You can also get Kindles and you can uh, read them online and virtually. Um, so there's lots of ways yeah. to get a book, right? And they're all delivering. They're all doing all kinds of incredibly fast deliveries at the moment. We're, we're the Blackwell's book of the month, which is really exciting. Um, and they're doing super fast delivery. So Yeah, I've been uh, ordering with my local uh, bookseller as well, actually. And it's just, um, they, they are super I know, the independents have been there. incredible. Well, um, Elle, I look forward to maybe meeting you in person one day. Maybe you can come into the Fun Kids studio when everything's <laughs> uh, a bit more normal. Uh, in the meantime, um, good luck with the book and uh, everybody needs to go and buy it right now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Brilliant stuff. We'll hear more from Elle in a second. Chapter one. This handwriting is utterly disgraceful. I hear the words, but they seem far away, as if they are being shouted through a wall. I continue to stare at the piece of paper in front of me. I can read it. I can make out every word, even through the blurriness of tears. I can feel everyone in the classroom watching me. My best friend, her new friend, the new girl. Some of the boys are laughing. I just keep staring at my writing. And then suddenly it's gone. Miss Murphy has snatched it from my desk and is now ripping it up. The sound of the paper being torn is overly loud, right in my ears. The characters in the story I was writing beg her to stop, but she doesn't. She crumples it all together and throws it towards the classroom bin. She misses. My story lies in a heap on the scratchy carpet. Do not ever write so lazily again, she shouts. And maybe she isn't even shouting, but it feels that way. Do you hear me, Adeline? I prefer being called Addy. Not ever. A girl your age knows better than to write like your handwritings of babies. I wish my sister were here. Kitty always explains the things that I cannot control or explain for myself. She makes sense of them and she understands. Tell me that you understand. Her shouts are loud and the moments after are so quiet. I nod shakily, even though I don't understand. I just know it's what I'm supposed to do. Now, this is a special bit for just the podcast. We want to know about Elle's favourite book from childhood. So let's ask her. So this is a secret bit for listeners of the Book Club podcast only. Uh, Elle, we talk to authors about their favourite books from when they were younger. Uh, And Can you tell us what yours is and a little bit about it? Yeah, I had many. This was very difficult to choose, but I pinned it down to the one that I read the most when I was about nine or ten, which was Secrets by Jacqueline Wilson. And it's a book about these two friends, a girl called Treasure and a girl called India. And they come from completely different backgrounds. One is living with her gran and her ex- extended family on a council estate. And there's, she's escaping her, her terrifying stepfather. And India lives in a very uh, upper class part of town in a big townhouse with parents that don't really understand her. And it's about their friendship and how, despite how different they are, they have this incredibly strong bond so um i love jacqueline wilson but for some reason i've never read this this book and i am mm. um i'm disappointed in myself i won't lie <laughs> it's definitely um it's not one of her most famous ones it's not tracy beaker it's not uh, you know one of her big famous ones i read it because when i saw I, she's the only author i ever got to see at the edinburgh book festival where i grew up oh. and she was talking about writing it when when we saw her at that festival so I, I never forgot it and i ran out and got it when it was published and it's really brilliant it's the only book to this day i've read that i enjoyed when it had two narrators I've, I've never liked another one since oh. that has two narrators. But if you read Secrets by Jacqueline Wilson, it's from both of their points of view and it works really well. So do you think uh, Jacqueline Wilson and her books maybe influenced your writing? 
Definitely, I, I definitely think so because as much as I love, and I still do love reading books about dragons and, and fairy tales and, and things that are fantastical, Jacqueline Wilson just wrote the most incredible real world stories that let you escape into parts of your own reality that you maybe didn't think about and people who have completely different backgrounds from you and different abilities from you and are from different places and and she really opened up those those places for for me as a reader and and I hope that's the kind of writing that I do as well I would never claim to be anywhere near as good as Jacqueline Wilson but I think it's definitely um in the same genre type I suppose yeah, I see what you mean because uh, you're both writing from like real world perspectives, right? You've got characters who are rooted, uh, rooted in that kind of reality, I suppose. Yeah, there's nothing that happens in in a kind of spark or or in Jacqueline Wilson's books that 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 couldn't happen in your own world as as a reader, and that's incredibly exciting and incredibly eye opening in so many ways um, because they're very very real people. And 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 I was just read her books and and I learned so much. I I just learned so much about the world we inhabit from the incredibly diverse characters that she she would write. Yeah, well, I totally agree with you because she was my favourite when I was a kid as well. Um, so we are definitely on the same page there. Um, <laughs> Elle, uh, thank you so much for chatting to us. And um, it was fantastic to find out a little bit more about your favourite author. Well, thank you. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much to Elle McNichol for chatting to us about her brand new book, A Kind of Spark. Definitely get it if you can. It's a really great read and I know it's doing very, very well indeed for her as well. So that's pretty much it today from the podcast. Remember to rate, review and subscribe wherever it is you get your podcast from and you can hear more with another author very soon indeed. Bye. <laughs>